What's up, y'all? This is Angela. And this is Daria. And this is Where Are My Keys? Hey, where they at, Joe? Where they at, Joe? All right. I'm just going to you right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, this week, I was in a bit of a mood. Mm hmm Okay. Um, I'd like to talk about gratitude and the different ways that we can um, kind of express it to others and for ourselves. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, gratitude is for us. Mm -hmm. Um I feel like it's a way to express humility. Mm -hmm. um, so what brought this mood about is I have a dear friend that is battling cancer and that kind of drudged up some feelings about my husband and just the legacy they left behind. Not just the three sons he left, but also the quiet interactions he was having behind the scenes <laughs> that he told me what's happening, but I was like, Negro, surely you don't have that many <laughs> friends. But lo and behold, it was standing room only at his funeral. And everybody had all these great stories about him and the conversations that were had and the different experiences he was having. So um, a lot of things that he would express to me, he was a big conspiracy theorist. Oh, was he? <laughs> yeah. he was a huge conspiracy <laughs> theorist and um, just probably one of the most intelligent people I have ever met in my life. But because I was, I'm not going to say in the moment, but as moms and spouses, sometimes we kind of get lost in the sauce mm -hmm. trying to make sure that everybody's taken care mm -hmm. of. So I wasn't having those quiet interactions and I was a self-proclaimed people hater. <laughs> so I was avoiding all these interactions by any means, just trying to make sure my kiddos got from A to B, make sure they ate, make sure the homework got done, make sure they got bathed, make sure the laundry done, make, you know, all the right. things that we do. Mm -hmm. But in this season, I'm being more purposeful with telling people what they mean to me in my life yeah. and having those quiet interactions when I'm at the grocery store and those short conversations because you never know what people are going through so and dealing with. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways that I try to express gratitude is a lot of times when I'm doing a ride share, I ask people about their day. Mm -hmm. I don't do this at work so much because... <laughs> Her, she needs to start. I'm on the clock. You need to start. Oh. Hey, how was your weekend? <laughs> oh my God. But like when I'm picking up passengers, I always make a point to ask them, how is their day? Mm -hmm. So not so much leading the conversation, but a lot of times I will ask them, your day going okay? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that opens up a lot of conversation and, um, it's opportunity to pour into people at that time. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I learned from my husband. It's a way that I express gratitude for the time that he was here. He was only here 36 years. He knew he was going to have a, a short life. But the impact that he made far exceeds his chronological years. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, okay, I'm trying not to cry. Mm -hmm. But right. it far exceeds the time that he was here. Mm -hmm. So... It's people that's going to live 100 years and mm -hmm. not have the impact that he had. Yeah, that's so true. In a third of that time. Yeah. Yeah, so that's I'm amazing. just really grateful for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, gratitude, I think, you know, one of the ways that I express it, I would say, is, um, you know, just being mindful that I don't have to have the things that I have, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. because there are, you know, a lot of people who don't or yeah. or worse off Absolutely. you know um so i think that that helps me um to be grateful and i try to be more mindful of it mm -hmm. because a lot of times you know if something goes wrong um you know we can complain mm -hmm. and that's probably usually the first thing yes. that we do you yes. know what i mean oftentimes oftentimes yes. <laughs> um but like when i'm complaining i always say well let me stop because I don't want God to take it from me because I'm that complaining part, about it. You know part. what I mean? So like if I'm complaining about, oh, my kids are too loud or, you know, I don't like my job, which I rarely do. But if it's something about the job that I'm complaining about or something mm -hmm. like that. But I'm like, Lord, well, I don't want you to take my job because I need my job, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, or Lord, I don't want anything to happen to my kids or for their voice to not mm -hmm. be there for some, you know what I mean? Yeah. So just little things like that. Like I'll try to think about, you know, like, okay. 
I need these things mm -hmm. or I desire whatever the things that I have. So yeah. like, let me stop complaining and let me start being grateful and let me thank God for the things that he has you mm -hmm. know, given. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the ways that I try. Yeah. To, yeah. Another way that, um, and it was before I got, before the mood came, <laughs> um, the Bible tells us about being managers of a little. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tell me if I'm wrong, sister. No, 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 no you're right. <laughs> Being the manager of yeah, a over a few few things, and then being he'll make you rule over me. Yes, yes, yes. And faithful so, over a few things. Yeah. yeah, and so I try to not be complacent, mm -hmm. but I try to manage the, the small things I have. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that I have I've been very um, cognizant of it mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the things that I'm not great at. So I think I could be a better mother. Oh, okay. Yeah, oftentimes I think that I can be more present okay. with them. I think a lot of times that there's so much on our plate that we don't give a whole lot of quality to the time. We focus on quantity yeah. and not quality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so um, I really folk, I really pray for stuff like that, mm -hmm. that my interaction with my kiddos, mm -hmm. that they walk away with something. Mm -hmm. And that, and that's another thing that I hope that I give my kids. That was my worst fear, like them growing up and yeah. having to do this on my own. Yeah, is that I didn't give them everything that they need to be successful human beings. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, but now that they grown, <laughs> <laughs> that's good that you say that too. Because I think now with our phones and social media, I feel like we're on our phones all yes. the time. You yes. know, so we're easily distracted. Yes. And I do find myself. When my kids are talking to me, I'm still doing this. I'm listening, but mm -hmm. I'm half listening. Yeah. You know, and they might say something. And then I'd be like, wait, what you say? Because, you know, I'm doing something. And they'll be like, never mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel bad. I'm like, no. like Because now I got I put the phone away. Mm -hmm. And now I'm ready to listen. But, like, I've missed the moment. Yeah. Because now they're like, yes. they've shut down a little bit. Yeah. So um, I try to be conscious of if they're talking, because it's not important. You know, mm -hmm. if I'm on social media, I'm typically scrolling unless I'm doing something at the moment, trying to get something yeah. uploaded for us. Then I'm like, hold on, y'all. Like, let me do this real quick because right. I need to get it up and out. Mm -hmm. But I try to, and I'm not the best at it, still working on it. But I try to mm -hmm. put the phone down and be intent, giving them eye contact or, yeah. you know, what have you. Yeah. Um, so... I feel you on that because what I don't want again is for them to be like, man, mama was always on her phone when she, you know, we were little, like yeah. I think about that or, yeah. you know, yeah. um, we never ate dinner together or whatever. Like, you Ooh, know, so I, man. yeah, so I try <laughs> to, because, you know, I want to watch TV while I'm eating, yeah. but like the TV, now the TV is where we can like sit at the table and see it. So they're here and mm. you know, somebody else is over here at this table. So I'm probably you know, I'll try to sit over here in this on this little table, or whatever. But you know, we used to sit at the table, and mm -hmm. we, you know, we weren't talking about like whatever. We tried one time, like, well, how was your day today? How was school? You know, whatever. So, but I just want us to have interactions that they'll remember mm -hmm. as a kid. So, like, that's why I do TikToks with my kids. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, like I want them to look back and be like, hey, Mama was fun, or remember when? Mm -hmm. Like, if I'm not here, like, remember when we did this with Mama? Remember when Mom and Dad? did such and such you know what i mean yeah so i don't yeah. want to miss those moments you know like you said and being more present mm -hmm. yeah because it's necessary for yeah. them too in this day and age yeah so have you ever um done a, done a gratitude journal this is something mm -mm. oprah prescribes mm -mm. <laughs> no oprah dr oprah yes. Dr. O. <laughs> yes yes so what you supposed to do with the gratitude journal Okay, so you're supposed to write down three things that you are grateful for. Every day? Every day. Okay. Every day. First I thing in the morning. That. Yeah. I think it would change my mental um, perception on a lot of mm -hmm. things. Starting the day off right. Yeah. To be honest. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Instead of, okay, so like I said in the previous episode, around 8 p.m. on Sunday night, I'm like, uh, I got to get up and go to work and yeah. have to be there by 7 15, yeah. which means I got to get up at about 5 because I'm going <laughs> to dink around the house yeah. for about 30 minutes. Yeah. Because. It's, as long as I would say, I'm, I'm sorry I'm late. I, I didn't want to come. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? I'm not sorry at all. But, um, yeah, I think um, doing a daily journal on the mm -hmm. things I'm grateful for, because I am grateful for my job. Yeah. I am grateful for the benefits. Mm -hmm. And I am grateful 
for a lot of my coworkers yeah. because they bring humor to the job. Mm-hmm. They bring um, expertise to the job. Mm-hmm. And quite honestly, some of the folks that I work with on a regular basis are some of the most intelligent people ever yeah like they are brilliant so do you have interactions with those people or you still try to just kind of keep it in the bubble at work in the bubble okay like in particular my best uh work friend Mm -hmm. matter of fact she was the first person i called when ty passed okay so she is a fervent prayer warrior Mm -hmm. like she, she's amazing, but she's still street. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she just tickles me. She is so funny to me. But um, she is she is or, the extraordinarily intelligent. She's mm-hmm. very smart. Mm-hmm. And so I enjoy just conversing with her. Mm-hmm. We've been on vacation together. Mm-hmm. And she is just, I'm grateful for her. Mm-hmm. Robin Robertson. <laughs> hey, girl. Yeah. She, <laughs> she is an amazing individual. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and she's gone through her stuff, but you would never see her sweat. Yeah. You will never see that girl yeah. pressed. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I just, I, I, I think about her a lot of times mm-hmm. because that has to go somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know what That's I'm saying? That's what I was going to say. You know, they always talk about, like, you never know the private battles that people are, yeah. you know, going through. And she just may be one that does not wear those emotions or she knows to keep it in a pocket or you know mm-hmm. what I mean mm-hmm. um or not to bog down somebody else with you yeah. know um her emotions or whatever yeah it's an extraordinary superpower mm-hmm. I don't know if hopefully I... she has a safe place yeah where she can I'm sure she does because yeah. again her family is tight knit mm-hmm. so I'm noticing a a, a pattern here mm-hmm. <laughs> my, my tightly knit um family folks mm-hmm. they just I don't know they are they're just amazing people to know. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for them. Yeah. But yeah, I am looking into that that journaling. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like a lot of times Erica Badu said that pen and paper, not pencil, not lead, <laughs> but pen and paper makes it real. Mm-hmm. Because you can't erase it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it drives me crazy when I see adults writing in pen- pencil. It's like, <laughs> don't ever no, do I it. mean, if I made some mistakes, I gotta. No, because that's real too. <laughs> um... I wanted to go back to, because you were saying how you had a rough week Mm -hmm. this week, kind of a bum week. Yeah. Um, So one of the things that we were kind of talking about offline was how do you express gratitude in the midst of having a bum week? Mm -hmm. Because in that moment, Mm -hmm. all you want to do is think, or not maybe that that you want to, but all you're doing is kind of thinking about some things, you know, that, or the things that are happening in life. Because sometimes when life happens, like... It just continues to hit you. So mm-hmm. you go through one thing, and then in a couple of days, you're impacted by something else. Mm-hmm. And then a week later, it's something else. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So you don't really have the time to figure out, dang, how do I get over this yeah. first thing? Yeah. Because two has happened. So now I got to focus on what the second thing that has happened. And then a week later, I'm focusing on the third thing. So I still haven't healed from, mm-hmm. you know, whatever those things are. So how do you not allow yourself to be taken over yeah consumed Mm -hmm. by those things because life again is going to life you know what i mean so how do you continue to express gratitude when you're in that okay so here's what here's what happened (laughs) okay so after i kind of realized day three Mm -hmm. it's a mood yeah (laughs) okay i called a friend and they were like well you want me to bring some pizza and wine Mm -hmm. Uh, help with that (laughs) (laughs) And it was like, cool, because this will be my cheat day. Yeah. So, no big deal. Mm-hmm. And so, there was that. And I was like, okay, I need to shower. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it was and one of those weeks. Yeah, yeah. you're just funky and safe. <laughs> but, it happens. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes you need to physically and mentally wash yourself. Mm-hmm. Cleanse mm-hmm. yourself mm-hmm. of the mood. Mm-hmm. Like, you're still going to feel it and allow yourself to feel it. Did you cry in the shower? I did not cry okay. in the shower. Because that's where I get my, like, release. Long time, that's where I pray. And okay. That's where I get a lot of great ideas yeah. in the shower. Okay. Man. But... I like to cry in the shower because it's, it's already the water and then it's just, it's a cleansing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I can get ugly in the shower. You know, I could be in there if I ever long I want to. And then just, and ain't nobody going to ask Ain't nobody going to ask me nothing. Yeah, that's where I get my, my tears off. See, a lot of times when I cry, it's very unexpected. Mm-hmm. And it's like once I get going, there's no stopping <laughs> Okay, Daria, cut it off. That's what you got to tell. That's what I tell myself. All right, that's enough. No, I'm just playing. But it does come. It comes to a stopping point. Like eventually, like I think I, 
I've cried all that I can, you know, mm -hmm. and I've got all out all of the frustration and the disgruntled feeling, mm -hmm. you know, that I needed to. Um, that's why I ask. I pray in the shower sometimes too. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's something about not having any covering and just being in a hot, I mean hot, to where you almost rotisserie chicken <laughs> hot. But it's something about being completely naked mm -hmm. physically and mentally just naked mm -hmm. like and just watch start over yeah, yeah fresh start yeah. yeah yeah and so and then also i really 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 have to work out like when i was i, I never got like um diagnosed with anything mm -hmm. but i do have symptoms of ptsd mm -hmm. and working out has helped to curb it okay and so a lot of times after i work out mm -hmm. i feel mentally refreshed mm -hmm. i feel physically refreshed mm -hmm. and i feel like in a way symbolically i've sweated out mm -hmm. a lot of negativity mm -hmm. and just just bad feelings yeah. in general yeah and then and then i get to go on the ride share and then you <laughs> get to talk with all these people whose situation circumstances are not the greatest but yeah. you still have an opportunity to talk to these folks mm -hmm. and pour life into mm -hmm. them and give them the, the prospect of hope yeah you know, and I'm mm -hmm. just grateful for the interaction yeah. and the fact that I have hot running water. Right, right. Um, yeah. It's a it's a lot to be grateful it for. It is. And I think, too, like, being mindful, I think we talked to this about um, on another episode. Um, you know how when you're going through things and it just seems like, Lord, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, okay, I get it. Like, you know, whatever. So you're, you know, you're praying and you're asking for God to, you know, do it, do it, fix it, Jesus, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but then remembering again that he's the same God that brought me through that test mm -hmm. that might have almost took me out. He's the same God that's with me in this test, yeah. you know, helps me, you know, to kind of stay in a, in a moment of gratitude now again. Sometimes life is a knockdown, drag out, like it's mm -hmm. pulling my hair, you know, it's stomping on me like while I'm down, you know, yeah. so it's hard. Yeah. So, but again, just be, you have to, like, it's just, you have to train your mind. Like, yeah. it's just a mindset to where like, like you said, okay, after three days, it's like, okay, girl, get up. Mm -hmm. You know Change what I mean? Because you could have just been like, no, nope, yeah. I'm just going to stay here. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, and it's not that easy for everyone to kind of pick themselves up either mm -hmm. so I always tell my patients like if you cannot get out of bed mm -hmm. and you don't want to do stuff you don't want to leave the house, that's when you know you need help yeah. you know what I mean but yeah. if you can get up get to moving and whatever then it's like okay I'm coming over that hump mm -hmm. you know sometimes you do just have to like stay in the bed for three days yeah. <laughs> or however you know whatever but if it's just like eh, I can't I just can't I'm not feeling mm -hmm. it whatever or of course you know having those um, thoughts mm -hmm. or whatever it's like okay you definitely know you need to get help but yeah. if you can look back over your life and think some things over mm -hmm. and understand that God you know was yeah. with you in those moments I think that helps to you know continue the gratitude as well mm -hmm. and then sometimes too I feel like I don't know it might be kind of weird but death mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. um, helps me to bring about helps me to have a little bit more gratitude for life mm -hmm. because I'm still present. Yes. So that means I still have time to do whatever it is I'm supposed to do mm -hmm. to enjoy the moment with my family mm -hmm. or, you know what I'm saying? To get, just to get it right. You know? Yeah. Oh my so, God. That part. Yeah. Like every day that we wake up, it's an opportunity to change mm -hmm. what you don't like, mm -hmm. to interact with more people, mm -hmm. to the, the fact that we're able to get out of the bed. Correct. Being grateful for mobility. Yes. Our and voice, mm. you know, the being in our right mind, yes. you know, just yes. all of those things. Yes. Yeah. And so the same friend that brought me the pizza and wine, they were like, well, you know, you don't have to constantly be going. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they were right. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I know me. Yeah. So there is, there comes a point where you need to know yourself mm -hmm. to know what's normal for you yeah and what's not normal Correct. for you yeah and so i'm grateful that i've had time along with myself mm -hmm. to be able to figure out and be aware mm -hmm. of when i need help yeah i need to call somebody yeah i need to do a b and c if i want to feel better yeah and a lot of times um what helped me when i was in a kind of it was depression. Let mm -hmm. me not sugarcoat it. It was depression. Mm -hmm. um, 
reminding myself of God's promises. Mm -hmm. So he promised that he would never leave you. Mm -hmm. He would never forsake mm -hmm. you. That he's going to be light at your feet. Mm -hmm. He's going to do all these things for you. And he can't lie. He got. <laughs> we his Hello. kids. We his kids. So he can't lie. So sometimes I would have to put that on replay yeah. and repeat mm -hmm. constantly until the weight lifted. Mm -hmm. Until I felt better. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes it's good enough to get in the shower. Mm -hmm. So I think that's another thing that that I'm really grateful for is that one, I had that alone time with God, mm -hmm. and I was able to develop that intimacy with Him, yeah. and that I was able to activate it. Yeah. Because a lot of us, how many self-proclaimed saints mm -hmm. are not utilizing that? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They can recite the Bible from cover to cover, mm -hmm. but they're not activating their faith. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And applying His Word mm -hmm. to real-life situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to do that. Um, mm -hmm. We were, you know, talking about offline too, like just mm -hmm. speaking life to your situations. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like whatever it is that may be going on, again, we're always just kind of focused on, okay, this is it, the negativity or the, you know, the roughness of it or the uh, frustrating part of those things. But like, let's start speaking life. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah. Like she said, bringing God uh, the word and bringing it back to him. Like, mm -hmm. well, God, you said. Right. You, you know, promised. You promised. <laughs> you know, so I need you to because yeah. I can't do it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So just, um, you know, you. I think you can express some gratitude by just speaking life to mm -hmm. your situations and yeah. not allowing the negativity to overcome or, or consume you because God... You know, they say that there will be tests, there will be mm -hmm. trials, like, you know, there will be things. Life is just not going to be a, a bed of roses, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, speak life to those things because God has given you, you know, yeah. that ability. So. And at certain points in my life, it has, um, I don't, I don't know what to say. A lot of, I know it's hard to believe. A lot of times <laughs> I don't know what to say and the prayer is as simple as, God, I don't know how to, mm -hmm. dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. And... The resources, the people come. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just that simple. Mm -hmm. um, prayer, my stomach growling. I, <laughs> I had some coffee, but that's it. But anyway, um, yeah, a lot of times we get caught up on how we present the presentation of it. Mm -hmm. And really, we overcomplicate a lot of things when really it is just a very simple act of moving forward. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just a simple act of doing. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times I don't pray kneeled. A lot mm -hmm. of times I don't pray with my eyes closed, head down. Mm -hmm. well, a lot of times when I talk to God, it's like I'm sitting here oh, talking yeah. to my bestie. We have a conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, um, yeah, it's just as simple. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people get caught up on the presentation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm grateful that, because um, that's not how I was brought up. That's not how um, religion and spirituality was presented to me. Um, I was brought up Pentecostal. So if any of y'all... <laughs> Brought up in the black church. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I have piercings. I wear makeup. I wear pants. All of those things. And a lot of Pentecostals um, have evolved since. Mm -hmm. But that is not how... It um, was. Mm -mm, yeah. Mm -mm. And that's not how my relationship with God works. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Because it had been easy. A lot of things that I've done in my past... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it just would have been hard to come to him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If I had that same mentality. But um, my God is forgiving. Mm -hmm. My God is very patient. Mm -hmm. He's a lot of things that I, I have not been. <laughs> As he should be. <laughs> and I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? um, I think, too, one of the ways, like, I'm just sitting here as we're talking, like, having a conversation with somebody mm -hmm. about the things oh, that you're grateful for. Yes. Like we're just going back and forth, yes. just kind of talking about those things, but it's allowing us to think about some things that we are grateful for that we mm -hmm. may not think about because every day, you know, we're thinking about other things, moving the parts of your family, you know, mm -hmm. so it's hard to kind of stop and take a pause. But when you're having a conversation with somebody, you know, that's why it's good to have like-minded people yes. in your circle because, yes, you know, like, again, if Angie's feeling down, then I'm going to pick her up. If I'm feeling mm -hmm. down, she's going to pick me up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then put me back in that space. Now, sometimes my sister, we were texting back and forth the other day. 
I forgot what I was telling her. She was like, oh, I mean, well, sometimes you don't <laughs> when, I'm, <laughs> when I'm telling you. Just like she'll try to encourage me and I'll be like, mm-mm, but so-and-so, so-and-so. You know what I mean? And she was right or whatever. But in that moment, I was trying to tell her to receive whatever it was that uh-huh. I was, you know, so she tried to throw it back on me or whatever. But that happens sometimes. Like sometimes you just can't see it in that moment, but mm-hmm. it's still good for somebody to encourage you so if you got somebody i said this before another episode that's gonna cry and drag it out just like you mm-hmm. like that's not helpful it's not beneficial you know mm-hmm. i mean i'm gonna hug you and i'm probably gonna tear up too but then when we come out of that hug i'm gonna try to lift you up yeah. you know what i mean because i don't yeah. want to see you in that space yeah so yeah yeah oh that's so good <laughs> i love that yeah i absolutely love yeah. that i feel just even like a little like relief just having this conversation you know what mm-hmm. i mean because like my heart is glad because i was able to think about some things you know yeah um that god has you know definitely brought me through um or that i have that i'm grateful for because life is not easy it's not <laughs> oh my god spit on the table <laughs> <laughs> real life happening y'all but if it, but I tell people this also if life was easy we wouldn't need Christ yeah absolutely okay? if we knew how to navigate this thing we wouldn't have to be like dad how, how, do, I, right. how do I do this right we wouldn't and he would not have had to die on the cross for us and say all of that sins. <laughs> all of that Yes, child. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I'm grateful that I don't have to be perfect. Like yeah. I still cuss, I still drink, but I know God. <laughs> she love God. You don't love God. What's wrong with you? <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, yeah. But I mean, every day we are striving to be Christ-like. Yeah. So He doesn't require us to come to Him perfect. Uh-uh. You know. Uh-uh. Um. You just have to be a willing vessel. Wet, willing vessel, mm-hmm. and say yes. Yes. You know. Absolutely. And follow His commandments. That's all he has. That's it. Yeah. Easy. It's not hard. Easy peasy. <laughs> all right, child. I guess we come to the end. Yeah. Yeah. So follow us on. Where are my keys on all of our social media? <laughs> yes. Y'all should know this by now. Where underscore or underscore. Tell a friend. My underscore keys. K-E-Y with a Z. Yes. Um, make sure you go to YouTube and subscribe because we post some exclusive content over there. Mm-hmm. And if you blink, you're going to miss it. So go ahead and subscribe. Um... And just make sure you share. Like, if you get anything from any of our, our podcast episodes, we would love for you to share it. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. For yeah. sure. Listen to us on Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, you can follow me at The Smaller Rooms. On IG. And I am Daria on IG. Yeah. Okay. Don't send no you weirdos. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> no. Only real people apply. <laughs> right. No bots. <laughs> well, what you going to say? No, I was going to say, like, we also dabble in some other stuff, too. We do. Um, mm-hmm. So, I also, on my page, I offer some real estate investment and money management and uh, financial literacy. Mm-hmm. And... Like, I got two other pages, too. I got... So, I'm a nurse practitioner, so I have... Mm-hmm. Um, a page and it's called your favorite FNP. Yeah. And then I also have a t-shirt business and it is under spirit tees. Mm-hmm. So you can find me there. Um, I think that's it for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's a lot. It is. I'm on Facebook too. <laughs> with uh, those, Both of those things too. But I've been kind of dormant in those things. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm trying, I really wanted to make a post for uh, January for your favorite FNP because it's been a minute. Um, See, so I pray for yeah, me. and she a real one. I'm a I'm a real one. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry about no fake degrees here. And it was a struggle too. So I'm mad at all y'all out here faking it. Turn yourself in. <laughs> Do the right thing. <laughs> all right, y'all. We'll talk to y'all later. All right, bye. Peace. Love y'all. <laughs>